Hi, thanks for tuning in today to Front Porch Conversations. We're here on the porch at the Copeland Community Center at Advent Christian Village. And I have as the guest this morning, Nancy Hallberg. Nancy, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here. And it's good to have you. And I hear this is your first TV appearance. This is my very first TV appearance. Probably, probably my last. No, you'll do great. <laughs> I Tell our viewers where you were born and where you grew up. Where I was born? I was born in uh, Ohio. And then, uh, but most of the time that I was at home with I, uh, with my folks and uh, the dog and all, we were in uh, Illinois and a uh, suburb of Chicago, LaGrange, uh, where Patey also comes from. <laughs> uh, we found another neighbor. Yes, we found another neighbor. That so, and, and that's where I live most of the time. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to ask, I'm going to ask you a question that you'll take us on another little tour in a minute. You what? I'm going to ask you a question that'll take us on a little tour of okay. where of, okay. where you were growing up. Um, and you told me you're an only child. I'm so. an only child, unfortunately, yes. Well, um, but you've had some adventures in your early life. Yes, I did, especially in my early <laughs> life. <laughs> Would you tell us about that? Yes, when I was uh, five, we lived in Ohio still. My dad worked for the steel mills there. And he, uh, this is 19... Uh, 38. And he took a trip, he and my mother and I went on a ship over to England and Wales. And at the time, I didn't know, I just, we were just going on a trip. And uh, we stayed in a, in a, with friends the first till Christmas, this was September 38, until Christmas and after Christmas we were in a, in a uh, rental place. Mm -hmm. And we were there. Um, probably till March when my mother and I and dad stayed at work and my mother and I went with some other people on a tour of the Mediterranean, which we saw Spain and Italy and uh, I don't know, a couple others I think, which for me was not, you know, it was just another place to be, but at that time. And, um, but dad stayed there and, and then, Suddenly, my birthday was in August, and suddenly we were uh, packing up and leaving. Now, this happened to be, by then, 1939, and Britain, and um, on then on September 2nd, Brit uh, Germany bombed Poland, and England had a treaty with Poland that if they got into any problem, England would come back, come along and take care of it. So evidently my father knew that England was suddenly going to be uh, in at war, was already at war on the 2nd. So he went down and um, by the 6th we got to the Liverpool, to the um, dock, and he said, asked the man next to him, I forgot to tell and he asked the man next to him, do you have a car? And the man said, no, I don't. And he said, well, you see that car right over there? And he said, yes. And dad says, here's the keys. I'm, le I'm going to the United States. So we got on the ship. It was a freighter. That was the only thing that he could get uh, tickets on to go was his freighter. And then uh, what I have at home is a, is a picture of um, a, uh, chart, uh, a sh uh, a ocean chart, chart uh -huh. a ship chart. Dad went up to the top where you go to in a, mm -hmm. a ship uh, like that and stayed with the captain and they talked while, while um, things were going on. And at the time, there are about eight or nine ships and they were probably English or Polish mm -hmm. that were coming into the channel there at the Mediterranean. And um, some were shot down. The torpedoes, they, the, not the tor yes, torpedoes. Mm -hmm. The Germans that were in um, just outside of the Mediterranean s sending torpedoes to certain ships. They stopped our ship. They had everybody had to get out and get in their uh, jackets, jackets and line yeah. line up. And uh, I was asleep at the time. This is what I've been told. And um, and then he checked what was in the hull, and it was um, cotton. So they and of course we were not at war with them yet. We were not at war until the forties, and so he, he let us go, and we continued on. But the chart I have is in 
is in a dark room because it's I didn't want it to get faded and it's very interesting there's about eight or nine different chips that I uh, haven't really tracked because I didn't get interested in this soon enough <laughs> so and then we came back to Ohio and then went several places and then ended up in LaGrange and when you were showing me the, the chart you had marked or your father had marked the ships that were torpedoed and yes he, he marked he wrote down the name and the place where each one of them on this navigational map uh, he marked it on this map about that long and and uh, so it's still there and very interesting I think to somebody who is following the mm -hmm. Second World War now my father was in the First World War and had been to France and Germany and and England and so he was he was very interested in the same thing he said we're going through it all over again so and it sounds like today's times <laughs> it does timely. very much like today's times just yes. different players yeah yeah it does um, but you were also telling me that while you were there you went to nursery school and oh, yes I did I went to kindergarten we had piano and I supposedly learned French uh, I, I took it later in school so I could get better but you know that one and uh, we had to wear um, gas masks sometimes that we would have a drill and then we would have it when you got home in the afternoon or at night you had to put put the black shades down and I it didn't even dawn on me what, what was going on and when as I read in books you can read that Children at that particular time and from then on, children were go being sent from London to uh, Wales or somewhere else to go to school because they were afraid they were going to be bombed. And I suppose I had some of those children in my class, but we didn't discuss that, so I don't know. But it was interesting. Um, I can remember them pulling this shades down and the I lights have a going out. Who's now deceased, but she was in England at that time as a yeah. child. Oh, was and she? she and her brother were sent for, my, uh, I think, two years. Oh my! Out away from their. Oh, parents. were they really? Wow! You know, because they lived in the heart of London. The heart of London, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Well, the heart of London looked then when they got started get bombing like it does over now in Kiev or wherever mm -hmm. you're looking. It's a shame. So the rest of your early experiences weren't quite as exciting as that? No, the rest of my life wasn't quite that exciting, <laughs> but I had some exciting. I forgot to tell you one of the things I did do. Well, I'll wait till you finish and you can ask me then. Well, or whatever. Go ahead. I, I, for, I got a, my, fly, my pilot's license. My son, my husband, when we were kids, the boys were probably, the, the kids were probably high school or so, and he did, decided to fly, so he got his... Uh, pilot's license and then I was up one day with him and I thought what if ha what if something happens I have to get down so I did and I passed I got my but that but at that time one of them was in college and the other one was coming and you had to rent we rented the ship the planes and if you wanted to rent you had to have been there I think it was once a month every so often because otherwise you you might forget something, and so it, once a month for, for to fly from there to wherever you wanted to fly to got kind of expensive. So I've left mine at home and haven't used it much, but that was a kind of exciting. Oh, I bet it was. <laughs> it was more exciting for him. He liked it more than than I did. But so. so you always felt like you could at least land the plane when you were with him after that. I think I could. I don't know that I could do it now, but. Uh. <laughs> Um, you mentioned your husband. When did you meet him? I met him in uh, probably eighth grade at an ice skating rink and we started dating towards the end of freshman year and we dated all through high school, all through college and got married two weeks after we graduated from college. <laughs> and so, his name? name is Lee Hallberg mm -hmm. and uh, he lived in the next town, we, our high school, which was Lyons Township High School. Uh, was two different townships came together so we that's where we got to go to school together but i believe you left your went your separate ways to go to college we did we did i started out at miami of ohio and went there until i was in foods and nutrition or wanted to be and i got when i got there and finished two years it was mostly for education 
teaching, and I, I didn't think I wanted to teach. So I moved to, went to Purdue and graduated there in dietetics. And he went, his, his, his uncle had gone to Swarthmore many years before in the East, and he got a scholarship there. And uh, so he, that's where he went. And we tried to get together, but neither one of us could get it a scoop spot where it, the school uh -huh. education was good for both of us. So we went, we were separated for four years and then got back together. And how long were you married? 63 years. So real a good 63 years. Yes. It was, it was really nice. I'm still having a little trouble, but then everybody has trouble when they come here and that happens. So mm -hmm. you just get well, along. Tell us about your children. My children. We have three. Our oldest son uh, is retired, and he's over in White Springs. He was with the mine over there oh, uh -huh. uh, for a while, and uh, he has had uh, six children, and um, they had. Well, anyway, I have a set of twenty here, here about here in the range of a uh, fifty miles or so, so that there's quite a few kids to mm -hmm. help me and him. So. Uh, and he comes over once a week, and he and his wife come over and look up the just and make sure I'm going straight. <laughs> <laughs> and then the middle son is a dentist, and he's out in Flagstaff, and um, he's doing very well out there. His two boys went to college in Arizona schools, and then they just they worked for two or three years in engineering, and then they both decided they wanted to be dentists. So they went to Maine, where they both got accepted to be dentists and uh, finished in dental school there. And now they're taking over the business. And my son Dale is, has uh, just about retired. And then my daughter is the third one. And she's uh, in uh, the Dallas area. And she uh, is working uh, for uh, a company and doing very well, and her first husband passed away, but she's got a good friend now, and so she's uh, doing very well. So they're all doing very well, and come to get see me as much as they can, so. Well, those are all blessings for them. They are blessings, they? they really are blessings. They're, they're, good, they're good kids. And as you asked me about the children of today, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what I would say. I was thought about that half the night. Um, what would I say to someone who's younger who's younger, younger person, How, right? I, it, it, it's it's really hard because things are so different we didn't have phones we didn't have tv we didn't well we did finally but mm -hmm. we didn't we had one tv for the kids in the whole house well and and really uh growing up we had uh and you probably the had kids were only going, three stations or something huh only you probably had like three or oh, four yeah, channels four, three or four stations mm -hmm. and uh, they and i think I think things changed partially about that time because I can remember uh, the kids starting to want things and I kept thinking, why do they, you know, they've never been skiing, why do they want skis? Mm -hmm. And it suddenly dawned on me on TV they had seen this sport of skiing and they never didn't know what it was and all of a sudden they had wanted skis, uh, which we did finally get some used ones. but. Um, I don't know. I guess that's what kind of turn, turn children around. They see so much mm -hmm. on TV. Or, Their world becomes broader in some ways. Right. And yeah. More yeah. restrictive. Right. Lives. Right. More than. Yeah. One of the things you said that is probably it was to me very good advice for a parent raising a child. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I thought and thought. I think the uh, what I would do is try to hear what they can say, what they're saying to others like in the car or at a party if you're there. Listen when the children are chatting back and forth. You'll get more, um, when they talk to you, they tell you just what you want in this or what they want or something. And it's, it's hard. And today's with all these things, they, it's even harder. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know what it's going to be like in the future. We used to know what sort of what things were going to be like. Uh, except for going to the moon and all that sort of thing. But uh, I don't know now what it's going to be. Well, one piece of advice you mentioned was is for you for a parent to keep their children busy and oh, yes. things they busy. enjoy. Oh, yes. Especially when they hit 12 to 20 or something like that. It's a busy time, and they can. there's so many things they can 
get into that's mm -hmm. unfortunate. But uh, we kept them pretty busy. We tried to anyway. Nancy, where were you and your husband living when you decided to move to the village? We, we lived in, in Tennessee. We lived up in the mountains in a town called Jonesboro, which is a, known as the storytelling um, place for the, almost the world, because we had world, world or all over the earth people came from, for storytelling. But anyway, and we had been there 20, 30, almost 30 years. Uh, but our, we, we, as we got older, we realized we were going to probably have to move somewhere we were. So we started seeing places to stay when the kids were little, or when they, in our 70s, and we would visit the kids because we thought it would be nice to have somebody um, be near you. It helps a little bit. <laughs> and uh, so we came here, and um, they took us around, and I loved it the first uh, think time it hot. We went to Dallas, and Dallas is another Chicago almost. So I said, no, I don't want that. I, I love the woods, and the, and Lee didn't either. So then we went to Flagstaff, which is a nice little town, but their their um, retirement place was uh, apartments. One one's probably four uh, high, four floors, and then they had about five. Uh, cottages and they were quite expensive and they only had five so that there was a, a big demand for them so and it was high and Lee's heart bothered him when he was there and so so we finally decided on here and uh, uh, when we had to make a decision uh, we I, I sort of was the one to make the decision and uh, and but he liked it here also and uh, but he by the time he got here he he wasn't able to do much so but I could swim and I like to swim and and play volleyball and oh that's so wonderful yes. <laughs> <laughs> we play water volleyball every afternoon and I just love it so mm -hmm. um, and all the other things as I said walking in we um, there's so many things to do here you just you can't it's hard to say no to something because you can't have no more time. You have to have a nap when you get to be my age. <laughs> but I, but, but it's so quiet here. The trees are here. I got up this morning and took the dog out in the backyard. Where else can you do that uh, when you're retired and sit and look at the flowers and watch the birds and the robins and not, no, not the robins. So you have, the cardinals cardinals uh, coming in and out it just it's just so soothing and Lee enjoyed it that part of it he would go sit out in the front porch and and watch things and I think uh, it's just a relaxing place with so much to do that you uh, you have have to decide what you want to do can't do everything but I know you were talking about you volunteer at the archives I wa I volunteer just one day at the archives I did uh, more before COVID, but uh, that kind of slowed things down a bit, and so I've just taken on one. I work in the, in the COVID with Millie, in the <coughs> archives. archives with Millie, and I enjoy it. Once in a while, somebody comes in, and I get a chance to talk to it. I'm probably the least, one of the least knowledgeable of the people who work there, because many of them have been here a long t longer, or they're from here, and they know the area, but I still, it's still interesting to me is so many things going on there so and then I worked here at the uh, pool for a while uh, before COVID mm -hmm. and I enjoyed that too it's an interesting place a marvelous complex here it really is it's pretty yet it just goes together with the trees it fits in it's fits in and it's perfect <laughs> for me anyway well I agree with you. I do I remember somebody saying they didn't uh, and you, they were moving because this didn't have a lot of shopping and then that's why I'm here because <laughs> <laughs> it has our food and uh, a few other a lot of other things but it's not you know you, it's not that far I get so many of them are a long way from shopping anyway so it didn't matter mm -hmm. anyway so well let's go back a minute and tell, talk about the time you were in Jonesboro 
when the time I was in Jonesboro. And, and what, <coughs> what was one of the things that you and your husband got involved in doing? We, we, after we retired, we, we, somebody said to us, there were just a few bed and breakfasts in town, and the town was reminded me a little bit like Live Oak was probably 15, 20 years ago, a little run down, so a lot of the homes are needed help, mm -hmm. and what, and well, that's the way it, Jonesboro was. And um, so, but somebody said to me that they needed more places for people to stay during storytelling. And I had a house that was built for at least, at least two rooms. They each had a bed, bathroom and, and the bedroom. And so we decided to start in and do that. And um, at the same time, we all had a big, big, big garden. And uh, Lee would go to the farmer's market on I think it was Wednesday and Saturday, and sell beans, which was the most cup, and uh, uh, raspberries and okra were the big sellers. And so we did that at the same time. He would get up early and go down and pick with the lights on the car so he could go later, and I would get the breakfast ready, and then people would come down and we'd We'd eat with them if we could, mm -hmm. and that's a whole other bunch of stories <laughs> <laughs> as the people we had there. But, but anyway, d we did that for 10 years and really loved it until it got rather complicated and people wanted this and they wanted that. And uh, with just two bedrooms, I, it wasn't paying for us, but mm -hmm. we really enjoyed it. Well, I bet with that you met a lot of storytellers. Oh, yes, yes. So I there bet. must be stories to tell. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to tell one? Sure. No. Sure. Okay. <laughs> one day I went to the front door and there was a lady there and she said, uh, she, they wanted to look at the room. They were going to tell uh, some other place and, and then they were coming back the next day. Could she look at the room? So she went upstairs and looked through and she said, that's fine. We'll be back. My husband's in the car. And as we stood at the door and talked, I, I said, well, where are you from? And she said, well, we live in Washington, D.C. They had been in the military. And I said, but she said, we used to live uh, in Ohio in a, a small town. And I said, well, where about, no, Indiana. And I said, well, where? And she said, Chesterton, Indiana. And I said, well, isn't that interesting? Because I went, one of the places I stopped after uh, we were in Ohio was my dad worked in Ches in a mill in Chesterton. I said, I used to live in Chesterton, Indiana. Her whole face changed, and mine did 30 seconds, 10 seconds later. She said, are you Nancy, Nancy Wilson? And I said, Yes, how do you know? <laughs> and she said, I'm, I can't even remember her name now. I sat behind you and you had long braids and I wanted those braids so badly. <laughs> she said, I can remember to this day. And we were only there a year and then we moved on. So that was the first one that, well, not the first one. There are a lot of them like that. You, you suddenly find you have a connection and sometimes it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. Someone in a bed and breakfast, so. That's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was neat. And I, I'm, I'm not sure that I've had quite the, that close of an experience, but it is amazing where people's where paths people, have crossed. Right, and, right. You, you think, oh, I won't know anybody there. Mm -hmm. And as I say, when I came here, I didn't expect to meet anybody but from my high school, and I did meet two people. So mm -hmm. it's and probably more that I just don't know. So it's a long uh, one of the things that you enjoy doing is reading. Yes. And you're part of the book club at the library. Yes, I am part of the club, book club. It's interesting. And um, what are your favorite type books? Oh, well, right now I'm really into World War One and World War Two books because I didn't read them back when I, I guess I just read other things. But I, now that I get interested in it, I want to see... Uh, if I had a connection to something, and, 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 it's, and I've read the books that have children going from uh, London to, to Wales, or um, the book you happened to mention, The, the Boys, the boys the and boat. Their Boat, mm -hmm. was very interesting because it went, it was from one college to the next college, and then and all of a sudden they were over uh, in Europe and Germany, and, and I found that very interesting. And at about the time you were there. At about the time I was there, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And for those of you who have not read the book, it's one when the book club signed it and I looked at the title, I thought, I'm not going to like this. I'm not going to read this. Right. I got so involved because it is a story of the, um, I guess it was the 1939 Olympics um, before. I think it was, yes. And um, the small, or Washington State was a very small, non-rowing college. Right. And they, against all odds, won the Olympics. Won, right. A little bit like the... The uh, basketball, or the no, the hockey team uh -huh, in right. what eighty something or other yeah, that won, or other was, good, yeah. and it was against Russia. I don't, I can't. Who did they, who did they beat uh, with, with the canoes? I think it was Germany. Germany, okay. Well, and Hitler was not pleased with them. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to tell you how much I've enjoyed chatting oh. with you today, and um, thank you for coming and being a part it's of this. It's been a real treat. It really has. I uh, have enjoyed thinking about it, and I'm going to be thinking a lot more because I, I have a lot of dad's stuff and letters. I have, have my dad's letters that he wrote his parents. They came from the house. I mean, and I thought they'd be interesting, but of course, he was writing to his parents, so almost everyone says, send socks, send candy, I'm doing well. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to go back and read the rest of them. And maybe you can read between the lines and the, maybe things, I can. the things our fathers maybe, did maybe tell so. us about World War II. <laughs> yep. Thank you so much for tuning in, and tune in again.